In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I seen something on Facebook that is so beautiful, yet at the same time, kind of disturbing to me. And um, talk about oxymorons, right? <laughs> How can something be beautiful and disturbing at the same time? So let me um, tell you what I've seen. I see a lot of people sharing this very verse that I um, have the camera aimed on instead of having it uh, aimed at me. I just want you to see this verse. And um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Let me show you the beauty in it first. It's a beautiful thing to see everyone who is sharing this verse. Very beautiful. Very awesome. This prayer is so powerful so amazing so humbling this this um is, is just a very awesome thing to see everyone sharing this prayer copying it and pasting it into their own um timelines and um I, like i said it's very beautiful when i saw that I guess you would call it a challenge. I don't know if that's called a challenge. I don't know like how they describe it where like everybody is doing it. But um, when I first saw it, I kind of sat like I, it was beautiful and I thought about it. And then I was like, no, you know, just just wait, you know, let me sit with this. And I sat with it for a minute until and I knew exactly um, what it was that I was going to do which is what I'm doing now um, but I, I had to sit and just watch and I watched and I watched everybody just post it but nobody spoke about the significance of this prayer nobody did and, and I just sat like God has me in a place now where he's causing me to be still listen listen just listen that's what he had me do Sunday just listen listen and it's been like that every day the same word that I'm getting is listen listen and so I'm looking and I'm listening and that's why you haven't really seen much of me posting um trust me he's given me so much and I'm still and it's overwhelming and, and I'm trying to discern what to share and what not to share like one of the things he gave me it was just something that I want to share and and when he gives me the timing to share it I'm, I'm gonna share it I'm gonna share it but this here um is where he has me today um now is the time for me to do my post of this amazing scripture this is Matthew chapter 6 and the verses is verse 9 through 10. Um, Jesus said, in this manner, therefore, pray. So he was telling us how to pray. He was giving us a formula. And so the first thing he said, and I'm going to go over this with you guys, because I want to make sure that everybody is not just saying the words, but understanding it. That's something that has been standing out to me. And I have been speaking about it. You know how we need to learn how to activate these scriptures, you know, and, and turn these scriptures on so that they will work for us. You could quote them all day long, but if you don't understand what you're quoting, you just saying a bunch of words. It's not going to run if you get in the car and you don't have the key to ignition you cannot turn the car on to take them and use that car to take you anywhere you're just sitting in the car so um definitely we're gonna go over this and i'm gonna help y'all 
activate these scriptures. I'm going to help y'all turn this scripture on, this verse on, especially because so many is posting it. And, and I really hope that um, in this that I'm sharing with you, that you will understand it in such a way that when you pray this prayer, you're not just saying the words, but you're reflecting on everything in this prayer that King Jesus um told us to pray so the first thing our father we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take this um bits we're not gonna run through this because every single piece is key he starts off by saying our father we need to recognize that god is our parent he's our parent and we are his children as such, there is a level of respect that we are to always give him. We could not exist apart from him. We would never, ever, ever know more than him. So just because we're growing up, we still need to stay humble before him. Y'all know, y'all got some grown adult children. Y'all know that sometimes the children get so grown that they forget that you way older than them and that you've lived longer than them and that you've experienced things like, like there's nothing going on in this world today that is um, any different from what's going on in the past. Okay, so Corona is new, but Corona is still a plague and there has been plagues plagues on the face of this earth before maybe not called corona but there were plagues and 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 the people got through them you know and, and and so at the end of the day nothing is new under the sun our father we need to recognize and acknowledge that he is our father and we need to humble ourselves in how we talk to him and how we deal with him and how we address him we need to recognize that's papa that's daddy that's abba father that's our dad our father in heaven was the next thing he said in heaven we need we need to recognize his position he is high and lifted up he is sovereign he is not on our level the scripture says that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts um, that he doesn't think like men do. We're not on his level. He knows all. He sees all. He is all in all because he is the creator. And again, apart from him, nothing would exist. Our father in heaven, we need to recognize his sovereignty. And in that, in doing that, that's how we humble ourselves. And that's the first thing. And that's the first thing he told us in Corinthians. I mean, not Corinthians, in uh, Second uh, Chronicles, chapter 7. He said, if my people who are called by my name, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. If we come to him like a child, come into a father, a parent, and, and if we recognize his sovereignty over us and we humble ourselves before that and we lower ourselves before him and we bow before his throne, he said that, he, well, let me keep going. Our Father in heaven, the um, this first section alone, just that first line by itself deserves a sila. It deserves a moment where you will pause and reflect. But for the sake of time, let's continue. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed. We're going to start there. That word means holy. It means clean. It means cleansed from all wrong that has been imputed. You see, what we need to understand is that um, everything that we're experiencing in this earth, in, in what we call life, is all because Satan charged our Heavenly Father with lying in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, go and read it. Satan told Eve that she wouldn't die, but instead she would be like God, knowing good and evil. And he deceived her, tricked her into eating something she had no business eating. And then she, in turn, gave it to Adam and he ate. 
All because Satan lied. He lied on God. So that's the one of the um, biggest reasons that we need to declare. Hallowed be thy name. Clean be your name of all in, uh, charges that has been falsely imputed. It wasn't, that wasn't the only lie. We need to understand that everything God gave to man and prepared for man was good. Like if you read in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, God saw everything, every day that he created, he saw and he declared that it was good. He saw and declared that it was good. And so um, everything that he prepared and created um, and gave to man, gave to Adam was good. And, and so in Adam's young state, and the reason why I say in his young state is because we need to remember Adam was not born. See, we're born so we understand babies and how babies need to grow up. But Adam was never born. He was created. So at one year old, he had the body of a grown man. Okay, he was created. And so because of that, he was told not to touch one particular tree. And there was a reason behind it. He, there was a reason. We are so fixated on the fruit that we fail to realize that the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that tree had a purpose, but it was Adam's disobedience that caused him to not recognize or realize that purpose because he now had to be removed from the garden. And by the way, it was after that mistake and after he was being removed from the garden that we come to find out that it was a second tree of great importance and that tree was called the tree of life Adam did not get to realize any of that because of his disobedience because of his rebellion and disobedience that that uh, we now like to call free will we got the ability to choose we have this free will um, the second charge that Satan levied against God was when he said regarding Job that the only reason that we serve God is because of how he covers us and blesses us. But if the hedge of protection was removed from us, that we would curse God and die. So basically, he said to God that he's buying our love and affection. That's what he said. That's go read it. Go read uh, Job chapter. Uh, one in chapter two, he charged Job. I mean, he charged God with buying our affection. So, hallowed be Thy name, holy and cleanse be God's name from all the lies that has been um, imputed against Him. His name be cleared of all of that. Holy, hallowed be Thy name. Everything that God said was true. Everything that God tries to tell us, but we too hard-headed to listen, was right. We need to remember that just as our children are a reflection of us, so that when our children misbehave, we as parents, we tend to get blamed for, for how they behave. We tend to get blamed for how they were or were not raised or disciplined. And we need to keep in mind that our behavior now reflects on God. So when we sin, and I'm talking to the Christians, I'm talking to everybody that, that knows this verse, that quotes this verse, we need to keep this in mind. We need to understand what it means when we're saying, hallowed be thy name. So we need to understand that um, no matter what the sin is, when we sin, the first thing the world is going to say is, and I thought they was a Christian. And that directly reflects on Jesus Christ because Christian, the word Christian means like Christ. And so just like Jesus is a reflection of our heavenly father, and he said that no one can see the father and live. But he also said that when we see him, we've seen the father. So too, we are a reflection of whom we claim that we're serving when we call ourselves Christian. Or even believers, because we're still 
addressing ourselves and connecting ourselves with King Jesus. So our behavior reflects on him. Therefore, hallowed be thy name. Cleansed be God's name of any wrong, of any wrong. Let man be, uh, let God be found true, but every man a liar. So it says, your kingdom come. Now, this is a good one also. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom. Not man's kingdom. Not man's kingdom. We're talking about a government. This is a a kingdom is a government. So we're asking God for his kingdom to come. But we need to understand what that means. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, it speaks of God's kingdom putting an end to all of the kingdoms and governments on the face of this earth right now. Are you trying to follow the governments and and come up under the governments of this world right now? Because God's government, when we ask God for his kingdom to come, we're asking for Daniel 2.44 to come to pass. Which is that, is this, look at that real quick. Let me um, mark this right here so I get back to it. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. This is what it says. It says, and in the days of these kings, we're talking about now, in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Now, I got that highlighted even different apart from that. And the reason why is because these kingdoms and governments of today, when one president or one ruler dies, it passes on to somebody else. It passes on to the next ruler. Um, Every four years here under the government that we are living under, Um, Every four years, there's a new president that is elected. And so it passes on. But in reference to God's kingdom, it says, In the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. So for those who be trying to say, well, you know, God is going to put such and so in a third. Y'all, uh-uh. He's allowing these things to happen for his purpose and his purpose at the end of the day, all of these kingdoms is going to be destroyed. All of these, it says it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. Remember, it says in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that would never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It's not going to change hands. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. So we're asking over here in Matthew chapter 6 verse 10, your kingdom come. We're asking God for his kingdom to come. Now, here's the deal. What we need to understand is as we apply God's word, and this is the thing that the church has been trying to teach us. This is the thing that the the different pastors and and, um, uh, eloquent speakers have been trying to teach us. When we apply God's word, when we open it, read it, understand what it says and apply it to our lives we can live and enjoy God's kingdom now on this earth that's why Jesus said we are in this earth but we're in this world but no part of it we're in it as ambassadors we represent the kingdom of God on earth that doesn't mean that we're going to um, disobey the laws of the land that that doesn't mean that God set these, he allowed that to happen for a reason. He set the governmental authorities in their places and position for a reason. And whoever disobeys that, disrespects and disobeys God. It's just like a child going to school. You represent your parent. The teacher is not your parent. But you represent your parent when you go to that school and you sit in that classroom for a certain amount of time. So we represent God's kingdom on earth, but in order to represent his kingdom, we need to 
abide by the kingdom principles and we need to understand those kingdom principles and we need to understand that those kingdom principles will cause us to also be obedient to the laws of the land like anyway your kingdom come your kingdom come we need God's kingdom to come we need to understand the benefits that we have under God's kingdom. It says your will be done. Now this is a great one. This is a great one. Your will be done. A capital Y. You are, we're telling our father in heaven that his will be done. Now understand very quickly for everybody who likes to promote that we have free will. When you're asking for God's will to be done, you are giving up your free will. You are recognizing, hallowed be his name. When you say for his will to be done, you are recognizing that God was right all along. He was right. He was right and we were wrong. We have been rebellious. We have been stubborn. We have been hard headed, trying to do our own thing, trying to be our own boss. We're asking God's kingdom to come. Because our kingdom, our, our running and trying to do our own thing, our sitting on our own thrones, it, it's just not working. It's not working. So we need his kingdom to come and we need his will to be done. And when we do that on earth as it is in heaven, we need to understand God's kingdom is already operating. It is already operating, fully functioning. And, and doing just fine in heaven and on earth, we need his kingdom to come and his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need, we need heaven on earth. Y'all, y'all, are you catching this? Are you getting this? And so in order to, to enjoy heaven on earth, we need his kingdom, not man sitting in trying to make their own judgment. Man can look, man can never Make a judgment that is fair to everybody. Man can't. Man can't see everything. Man don't know everything. But God, does. he sits high. He's in heaven. And he looks though there's nothing hidden from him. He lets us know what to do. When we disobey him, we're calling him a liar. Hallowed be his name. We need his kingdom to come. We know from reading the gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we know what... um. God is able to do. We know how Jesus healed every kinds of sicknesses and diseases and cast out all types of evil spirits. We know that. We know that his kingdom needs to come. His will need to be done, not our own. We, we trying to do stuff our own way. And we like to tell everybody, I got free will. I can make my own choices. You need to be choosing what God tells you to choose. God said, he said, choose life, not death. That's what he actually tells us. We, we need to understand what his will is. Your will be done. Y'all better, better be careful with what y'all praying. You better be careful, especially if you're trying to hold on to your own will and you're trying to do your own thing. Still, you need to be careful because when you ask God for his will to be done, his will overrides yours all day long on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, sir. That's submission. That's now that's now our submitting on earth as it is in heaven. On earth, that's that's submission. That's another humbling on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day. We don't have to worry about tomorrow. He tells us not to worry about tomorrow. God got us. We need to concern ourselves with this day. And we need to ask God for this day for our needs to be met, our daily our daily bread. And we need to understand that he, he got us. He got us. He got us. Forgive us our debts. Our debts. We need to understand what our debts is. Sin is something that we all inherited. We inherited from our heaven, from, from um, Adam. We inherited sin from Adam because Adam disobeyed our heavenly father. And his disobedience and rebellious acts put a debt on us. The debt just transferred down to us. So we need to, we ask him to forgive us for these debts. And then in our not knowing, in our not knowing um, and not understanding, we turned around and with the, the faulty knowledge that we have here, we've created more debt. 
and so and and that's called transgressions and iniquities so now the transgression that's um that is when we sin um these are acts of sin the transgressions they're acts of sin and the iniquity is when we know how to do what's right and we still make a choice to do what's wrong so we need to and so these this stuff causes debt and it it causes debt to increase on us so we need to ask god to forgive us our debts but here's the thing there's a there's a a a catch to that if our debts is going to be forgiven or for our debts to be forgiven it is as we forgive our debtors which means that anybody who is indebted to us in any way we need to forgive them we need to for real for real forgive them we need to look we need to keep it before the lord and make sure we don't need to just assume that we've forgiven because you know how there's a lot of people that say i forgive you but i won't forget well if you're not forgetting you're not forgiving as we forgive our debtors um the next line says and do not lead us into temptation now that's key first of all jesus told us to pray this he said pray to the father that we are not led into temptation but do you understand that do you understand that let me show you this let me show you something real quick he said pray that we are not led into temptation off a second okay um this is matthew chapter four i want you to see something it says then jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil did y'all catch that we gonna we gonna see y'all like to go ahead and 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 keep reading and, and you'll miss everything else so let me cover that over so that you can't see nothing else now it says Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. To be tried, tried as if by fire. Proven to be gold, the trials. If you remember the letter that Jesus had um, written to Smyrna, the church of Smyrna in Revelation chapter 2 verse 10, he told them to not be afraid of some of the things that you are about to suffer or not of some of the things he said don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer we're gonna turn verse 10 here we go do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer indeed the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days be faithful until death and i will give you the crown of life he's telling us at first he said not to fear don't fear don't be afraid of any of those things which you are about to about to something's coming yeah you are about to suffer he's telling you that but he also said don't be afraid of it he says who's doing it he says indeed this is for real for real the devil so he's telling us who is doing it is about to so it's something getting ready to happen throw some of you so it's not everybody but some of you into prison there's a lot of different types of prison we're not just talking about metal bars with the clankety clank there is health prisons there is emotional mental prisons there's financial prisons um relational prisons um he says that you may be tested so it's given us the purpose that you may be tested and you will have tribulation and you're going to go through something. It's going to be hard. 10 days. Now, this is not 10 literal days. This is not 10 24 hour days. The number 10 represents completion and the bringing of something into order. So he's telling us that, that it's going to be 10 days. In other words, it's going to be about it's going to be it's going to come to a completion and when it comes to completion it's going to be ordered he tells us to be faithful do not fear be faithful until death he's telling us for how long be faithful until death and if you have to die be faithful until death he says and i will give you the crown of life i want you to check something else out real quick since i don't went here and went there with that um, about the testing 
This is James. He tells us how to go through the test. It says, um, my brethren, let me cover this something, another something to cover over because <laughs> we like to read ahead sometimes. Okay, it says, my brethren, count it all joy. That's the key. Count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, the testing that we're talking about, right? Knowing that the testing of your faith, and that's the key. That's what's being tested. Our faith is being tested. Do we truly trust God? Do we truly believe God? It produces patience because it makes us wait on the Lord. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete. There go that word again. Complete, lacking nothing. There's a purpose for it. So in Matthew chapter 6, again, he tells us to pray that we not be led into temptation. That it's a trial. It's a trial. It's a suffering. As a matter of fact, Jesus told uh, Peter, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. Let me see if I can find that verse just off. I think I've read it so much. I think I can find it right now. I did. It's Luke chapter 22. And it's verse number 31. Simon, Simon, indeed. There we go with that word again. For real, for real. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith. Remember, it's a testing of our faith that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother in order to return. That means you might have left. You might have fallen off. You might have given up. You might have grown weary. But when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. So we're all going to come under this testing, right? But Jesus said that we can pray to the Father that we do not. Here, here it is right here. Pray that you may not enter into temptation he tells us to pray that so says and do not lead us into temptation um, but deliver us from the evil one deliver us deliver us from the evil one and this is significant because this again the fact that we have to ask to be delivered that's humbling again humbling that we need to cry out for help Help me, help us, deliver us from the evil one. Now, look, let me show y'all. Let me show you this. I'm sorry, I'm, I keep sitting down and standing up. Um, but let me show you this. This is in James again. This is chapter four, talking about humility, right? Therefore, submit to God, submission, it, submission, obedience, submit to God. Resist the devil. Resist is another word that, that requires action and, and, and it requires um, intensity. It's an intensity with that, just like with submission. Resistance is an intensity. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So, again but deliver us from the evil one how is that deliverance going to come we have to submit to god james chapter 4 7 and verse 7 and we have to in submitting to god we have to resist the devil it says for yours again we're acknowledging god for yours is the kingdom not man so are we trying to still place a man on the throne are we still trying to to fight about who's sitting in office and who's doing what not -uh. for yours is the kingdom yours who our father your kingdom come your will be done for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This whole verse is a C. La 
moment. It's something that we need to take each verse and just really pause and think about it, not just quote it and say it. Okay, look at me. I quoted this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our debt. Give our debtors and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And then we go on about our business. Okay, so what does that mean? Now, we have to take these verses and we have to ponder them and think about it and think about what it means. And as we do that, that really will cause us to humble ourselves before the Lord and realize that we need him. We need him. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. Take this one verse at a time. One verse at a time. And think about, really think seriously about what each verse is actually saying. And as you do that, as you do that, Jesus, again, I mean, um, in first, second Chronicles, second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14, remember what it said. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, everything through here, through this verse causes us to humble ourselves, recognizing him as our father, recognizing his location, recognizing that he was right all along and that we weren't submitting recognizing we need his kingdom because we we've been trying to rule we've been trying to rule ourselves we've been dominating other people and, and it's just not working recognizing that we need to give back that free will because we've been messing it up we've been making a lot of wrong choices we need his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven we again submission the earth submitting and following the lead of heaven we need him for our daily needs each day, this day, this day, each day, not tomorrow, but now we need to be forgiven of our debts. We have a huge debt and yet recognizing that we can't get forgiven if we're not forgiving. So we got to forgive our debtors because how we forgive others is how we're going to be forgiven. Praying to him, please not lead us into temptation but deliver us. And in order to get that deliverance, again, we have to submit. Acknowledging that his is the kingdom. We're ending with that again. We started with that about his kingdom coming, but acknowledging that, that the glory, the power, the kingdom, is it all belongs to him. It all belongs to him forever. How long? Forever. And then, of course, we're going to agree. Amen. Y'all be blessed. I hope this blessed you. Bye.